This right here is a 12 lead EKG. Inside this video right here, I'm gonna talk about a special circumstance on 12 lead EKG. Here we go. Hey everyone, Evan, the paramedic coach here. I'm so happy you're able to see this powerful lesson about 12 lead EKGs. We're talking about T wave inversion. What does it mean for your patient when you see a flipped over T wave? But first, hit like, hit subscribe, smash those buttons down below. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, there's really four main things we're gonna look at when we're talking about a flipped T wave. And we're gonna break down all of them here and what they mean for your patient. Now, very important, before we begin, I'm gonna show you real quick what a normal T wave looks like. Right here is a normal T wave. And then over here, you can see a flipped, also called inverted T wave. You can just see here, one points up, one points down. Now we know that, let's continue. Now the first reason for T wave inversion or a flip T wave, I'm gonna start with a kind of a weird one. It's actually a stroke patient that may show, we call cerebral T waves on a 12 lead EKG. Now these are very deep looking flipped T waves that you will see with a stroke patient. Does it happen all the time, but it can occur in a stroke patient. Now, I'm gonna talk about three more cases where you might see a flip T wave. This reason right here is the most common, or you could even say is a classic reason why somebody has a flip T wave. It's ischemia. The heart, the coronary arteries, they're not fully blocked, they're being choked, right? Or a partial blockage. That is ischemia. It's not a full STEMI yet. We have flip T waves. We can also have ST depression at the sign of ischemia, but flip T waves are a major sign of ischemia. So here's our most classic reason, but the second reason on this top four list. Our third reason right here is actually pulmonary embolism. This is a very interesting case, and I'm gonna explain this in detail. We're gonna also talk about acute core pulmonary when we're talking about this S1 Q3, T3 finding. What is that? Let's talk about it. So, if someone has a pulmonary embolism, you can actually see it on a 12 week EKG. Not always, sometimes. Let me discuss. You'll have a better chance if someone actually has a massive pulmonary embolism. I'll explain why. So here it is. So, the criteria is called S1, Q3, T3. S1 means a larger than normal S wave, a large S wave in lead one. The Q3 means the present Q wave in lead three. T3 means there's a flipped, there it is, a flipped T wave in lead three. Now again, the presence of flipped T waves could mean pulmonary embolism. Okay, we got that. We know pulmonary embolism is an embolus in the pulmonary artery tracts. Right, what if we have a massive pulmonary embolism? What could that cause? Core pulmonary, what is that? Well, that's a resistance of blood flow going through the pulmonary artery. So that means we talk about it, blood backs up. What does that cause? That causes yeah, right heart failure, exactly, okay? Blood backs up, okay? So, acute core pulmonary has to do with this finding of S1, Q3, T3, which is caused by your pulmonary artery being blocked, causing that resistance, okay? This is our third one. And we got one more about a flip T. The final culprit right here is left ventricular strain. So, we talk about the left ventricle being under stress. 
It's strained due to high blood pressure. Chronic hypertension can cause the left ventricle to be strained, which can cause flip T waves on a 12 lead EKG. So let's put it all together and wrap this up and think about this for our patients. Stroke, pulmonary embolism, ischemia, and then left ventricular strain. What's the most ominous? Well, obviously, strokes and pulmonary embolism is a life threat. Ischemia can lead to a STEMI, acute myocardial infarction, a life threat. And obviously, the, the final one that we talked about, left ventricular strain, well, that could be someone with high blood pressure, but it could lead to something worse too, right? So how do we look at this with our patient? Here's what I recommend, and here's the, the bottom line on this video. You should know about the S1, Q3, T3. It's good information to know if you suspect a pulmonary embolism. It only takes a few seconds in the ambulance to put in the stickers and do your 12 lead with a critical patient. That's okay. So now we know that with pulmonary embolism, great. Now, if we're dealing with a stroke patient, right, we're gonna be doing other things obviously, right? The biggest thing with a stroke patient is time, right? Now, could you have time to do a 12 lead EKG? Sure, okay? But remember, those cerebral T waves are not always present. It's like with pulmonary embolism, it's not always present. Think of those two as kind of, it could be there, but don't count on it. You can have a stroke and a pulmonary, remember, you can have a stroke and a pulmonary embolism without it. It's something like you should know about as a medic. Okay, now the big one here is ischemia. Flip T waves equal ischemia, right? So if you're looking at a 12 lead EKG, like let's say for example, the EKG that I pulled up earlier, that was a 12 lead EKG in the beginning of this video. The biggest thing about flip T waves is ischemia. And if you see flip T waves, you'll wanna keep burning and printing EKGs because flip T waves could lead to ST depression, could lead to ST elevation. A STEMI will evolve right in front of your eyes, my friends. And that's the big takeaway for today. You see a flip T, keep burning EKGs and see if it transforms, see what it turns into and keep monitoring your patients. Now you know what it is. There it is. I've put something special together for you and I want you to know about it. It's called the Video Study Course. Well, I've put together a video library of over 400 plus videos and access to our private student group. It's the first link in the description down below. It includes, you can see on the screen here, anatomy and physiology, NREMT prep, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, drug card profiles, and much, much more. Hit the link down below. You can get lifetime access right now by clicking the link in the description. My friends, see you in the next one. I'll see you there. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions, like, go for it, you could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. The people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you gotta prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time with everybody else. You want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple past the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact, like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed.
it was um outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, more like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.